Hey guys and welcome back to another one and I hope you are all okay on that side of the screen. Now today I'm going to share with you my review of the Windsor Mini PC dual operating system Windows 8.1. Now it has Windows 10 as you will see in the review and also Android KitKat. Now this is a last generation device and it has been here with me uh, for a while but only now I could share, uh, test it out and share my review with you. But I would like to take this chance to say that sometimes it is worth it to get a last year or last generation device as you want to call it, uh, especially when we can get a low price, at least low enough uh, and have uh, the important thing is to have a low price, in my opinion, of course, on this uh, topic in specific, and uh, that the device can deliver what we need from a specific, uh, specific device, sorry, uh, which in this case is a mini uh, PC. The interesting thing here, it has dual operating system. So for those of you that are looking for, and I've got this question on the channel a lot, looking for Windows and Android, this might be a option to consider. Uh, it has pros and cons as any other box, so hopefully this video will help to decide if this is the machine for you or not. But before we go to the video, I've got something right over here. Usually I have my TV showing on the, the screen of the box that I'm reviewing. But for those that follow the channel and, and keep asking, hey Robert, which is the next box? I'm going to give you a spoiler alert here. Uh, I've got three bo uh, four boxes here, sorry. One is hidden here. Uh, so... In the near future, these are the boxes. I've got some more plans until we come to the summer and make a wrap up of all of them. But uh, in the near future, you will see the Pro Box EX2 Plus. Last year, we saw the uh, KitKat version. This year, uh, we have the Lollipop version. My expectation is that it is a really nice box. Uh, the MX4, once again, a great expectation. Um, because I tried the last year generation and it worked great, one of my favorite uh, budget boxes. Uh, so hopefully this one will be at least the same experience that we had or if possible even better. Although the hardware, the hardware sorry, is the same on the two boxes, uh, we will get uh, a nice experience. And then I've got here the latest machine from ZD which is the X5. I've got also a nice expectation because the has the S905, the new CPU from AM Logic, but it only has one gigabyte of RAM. So let's see how that uh, will go into uh, the performance of this machine. This is my only concern is the RAM, but hopefully it has a nice balance but only testing and then I've got something right over here which is a unbranded I, I can't recall the name it was a nice deal one of those cheap box that I can find and, and buy it and bring here to the channel it has the Rockship 3368 is not my favorite CPU but let's see because I've, I've had a nice experience in the past with machines with this CPU um, from Tron Smart for example and even from Zidu as well uh, some really nice experience pros and cons like any other and I'm talking too much on this uh, intro that being said guys hopefully this video will help you to decide if this machine is worth it for you or not on my particular case this is the first machine actually uh, uh, that I'm testing with dual operating system uh, system sorry and I will try in the future to see any other deals uh, that have this option um, and that is it let's go straight for the video with no further ado. Hope that you enjoy it and I'll see you in a few seconds. And here we are with the Wintel Mini PC with dual operating system, Windows 8.1 and Android KitKat 4.4.4 that features the well-known CPU Intel z 735F, 2GB of DDR3 RAM and 32GB of flash storage. And regarding our usual quick unboxing experience, once we open the package we will find the Wintel Mini PC on the top with a really nice small footprint as we can see on screen, one power adapter, one HDMI cable and the usual document. And as you may have noticed, there is no remote control included, so if you want to use this machine as a media player, I strongly suggest a wireless remote control. And now taking a closer look at the front, we will have a really nice power button and a dim blue light when the device is on. On the right hand side, no ports at all, while on the left hand side, two USB 2.0 ports and one microSD card slot. At the back, one headphone jack, Ethernet port, HDMI, micro USB and a power input jack. At the top, that wind. Dell logo and finally at the bottom a rubberized surface. 
And once we turn the machine on, we will see a screen that will let us choose which operating system we want to use. And if we select Windows, then on the first time, it will take us through the setup wizard and in no time we are ready to use it. And here I would like to mention that one of my concerns on these budget boxes is always the Windows license and the Wintel box comes with a full license of Windows 8.1 being activated. On the other hand, if we boot into Android, this will be the launcher installed, which actually I didn't like it that much, but after a few minutes I had mine customized the way that I wanted. And storage was one of the questions that I had and if this is your question as well then you will find 13 gigabytes of free storage on the Windows side and 4 gigabytes on the Android side. And before I forget, once I finished up all the tests, I updated successfully the machine to Windows 10 without any issues at all. Other curiosity was how much time it takes to change from one operating system to another and the results are from Android to Windows it takes roughly 38 seconds and from Windows to Android roughly 1 minute. And moving to our usual benchmarks on disk speed test, we got 104 megabytes per second on reads and 66 megabytes per second on writes, which is a great result and it's not easy to find these speeds on budget boxes. On the network speed test, using a power line adapter, we got on Wi Fi 41 megabits per second on download and 20 megabits per second on upload, and on the Ethernet connection, 94 megabits per second on download and 20 megabits per second on upload. Which, by the way, the power line adapters that I'm using at this moment are the Devolo Powerline Adapter Kit with Gigabit Connection and Wi-Fi AC and for a full review just check out the right top corner of this video. And moving along, on Geekbench 3 we got 794 on single core score and 2008 on multi core score. And on the following tests, I would like to ask you guys to completely disregard them as the firmware is forcing some apps, including these benchmarks, to run at a lower resolution of 1360 by 768 to ramp up the results, which in my opinion, this was not necessary at all, as the Z3735F is totally capable of running any app as we have seen on the past year on the channel. Fortunately, Kodi does not have this behavior and runs at 1080 resolution as it should and Windows also runs maximum resolution of 1080. And talking about Kodi, the Wintel box was capable of playing the Blu-ray MKV movies that I've got on my library located on my Nash without any issues at all and also played fine Big Bug Bunny and Tears of Steel at 1080 and 4K with the H.264 codec as expected. The only movie sample that it didn't play smooth was Sintel which has the H265 codec but back when I did review the machines with the Intel Z3735F this test was not included so I will not bash on this machine but for those that need H265 codec playback capability this will not be the best choice on your particular case and in terms of gaming really quickly no surprises here I tested with two of my favorite games at this time Responables and Asphalt 8 Airborne and everything was very smooth. And finally on mirroring and streaming tests, the iPad mini with retina display was capable of mirroring and streaming with a smooth experience both on image and also on audio, but the firmware needs some tweaking as it will not occupy the full screen. And mirroring my wife's iMac and streaming live slide shows such as the magazine style, sliding panels and vintage prints, the results were the same. A smooth experience but not using the full screen. And you guys might call me picky but this is actually a feature that I use a lot here at home on all my machines, so it has to be perfect. So in conclusion guys, things that I did like the most were the small footprint of the Wintel box, the dual operating system option, a fast storage and finally a nice overall performance. On the other hand, things that I did like the least were the resolution forced at 1360 by 768 and the airplane not playing at full screen. And that is it. We have reached the end of another one. Hope that you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, so don't forget that usual thumbs up. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.